William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. So we're joined here by Tammy Johnston, chairwoman of the South Boulevard Park Row uh, Historic Neighborhood Association. I, I was so close. It's a long one, Tammy. It's very long, but I, re I really appreciate you being here in spite of the fact that I couldn't quite remember that. Thank you for having me. Uh, of course, absolutely. So, just to bring people up to speed on, on what brings you out here to begin with. So you've lived in Dallas for how long now? I've been in Dallas uh, now roughly about 20 years. Can you hear me? Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that better? Yay. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I've been in Dallas roughly about 20 years off and on. Um, I've been in South Dallas now for about two years. Mm -hmm. And so I guess just tell us a little bit of your experience to start off with of moving to uh, this, this neighborhood here in South Dallas, the uh, <clears throat> Park Row, South, uh, Boulevard. South Boulevard, yeah. Historic yeah. Association. Yep. So, um, uh, as I said, I've, I've been in Dallas South now for about 20 years, and um, I was actually looking to build. I was looking for some land to build a duplex on, and um, wasn't looking to buy a house. Um, knew about South Dallas. I had never lived in South Dallas. Um, I'd been to South Dallas. I'd been to Fair Park. Um, but uh, this particular house came up on a, 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 not a news feed that I was getting, but like a newsletter that my realtor was uh, sending me, you know, with, with new properties that would come available in certain areas. And I saw this home, which was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the pictures, you know, the inside of the house were fantastic. I mean, the, the house was in disrepair, but it was just beautiful bones and, and uh, you know, the price on the house. I was like, well, for the square footage, you know, South Boulevard, where is that? You know, <laughs> some, something's wrong here. You know, this couldn't quite, you know, this can't be right. And so my realtor and I were like, well, hey, let's go check it out. And I did, and um, I, as soon as I saw the house, I fell in love with it and knew that the house was was going to be my house. Um, interestingly enough, um, the previous owner of the home uh, is Elva Baker, who has been a uh, staple in South Dallas um, and has been uh, definitely a South Dallas community advocate for the last 25 years. So uh, when I, uh, you know, approached Alva about buying her home, uh, not only did she give me the history of the house, which is uh, the house, it, it was the, the house that Metzger, the, who owned the farm or the dairy, I think it was a dairy. This is his home that he built. Almost a hundred years old. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, Alva kind of sat me down and gave me the history, her history, uh, as far as uh, her advocacy in the community. And so, um, you know, as she was talking to me about that, I said, you know, hey, I've, I've been in Dallas, uh, you know, roughly about 18 years, and Dallas has been really good to me. Um, and maybe it's time, you know, for me to give back. And so um, I said, hey, you know, Alva, if you sell me the home, you know, I promise that, you know, I will take good care of the house, but that I will also be, you know, give back to the community, be a part of the community, the neighborhood, um, as well as the community at large. And so, um, I guess you could say I'm keeping my promise to Alva. 
<laughs> awesome. That's great. And so, so you moved into the house about two years ago, and then uh, w within that year, you had become the president of the Historic yeah. Neighborhood Association. So, so you made good on that promise pretty quick, I too. Did. I did. And and though you lived in in Dallas for a, a pretty long time now, you you hadn't had any experience like with this level of neighborhood involvement no. up until this point. So obviously. Elna had a lot to do with it, but, but what would you say was, was really the galvanizing element to you choosing to do that here and now? Well, you know, um, living in South Dallas, we have a unique set of challenges. Now, I, I have to say that um, I did read the accommodation. I've read the accommodation roughly maybe about five, seven years ago. Um, and so I'm very well aware of, you know, Dallas politics and how South Dallas came to be. It's impressive because that was before all those PDFs fell off exactly. of that truck. Exactly. You know, I, I, and interestingly enough, got it at the at the Dallas Library. You know, they have like one copy back in the vault somewhere. And after about three weeks of, of research, I, I ended up getting a copy of it and reading it. And um, I have paid attention. Um, so. Um, you know, part of my decision, uh, you know, after after talking to Alva, the home's previous owner, and, and part of my decision was based upon that. You know, this this is this is an opportunity for me to uh, affect the right type of change that that South Dallas Fair Park community needs. And so, and what does that change look like for you? Well, um, like I said, we have a unique set of challenges um, in our community and in our, our neighborhood. Um, it, it's, it, it means galvanizing. Um, our community tends to be fragmented. Uh, there's a lot of people in a, in a lot of the neighborhoods who are working within their neighborhoods uh, to, to make it a better uh, neighborhood and community, but everybody's working in silos. Um, at least that's what I've come to find out. And so uh, one of the things that I am working to do, which I created the Greater Communities of Fair Park, and I'm the chair of that as well. Oh, okay. Um, is to, to galvanize uh, the, the neighborhoods within, you know, the Fair Park area um, and, and uh, work to advocate, you know, have, have the galvanization to advocate at, on a whole for the community. And, and so in talking about, you know, the unique uh, problems that are faced by this community, you know, Gentrification looms large. The G word. Ah, uh, yes, the, the G, the G word. Um, and you know, to a certain extent, there there might be some, you know, in looking at the community being as fragmented, that might see you a, as a newcomer, yeah. you know, trying to come in and, and uh, make changes. And and so, how do how do you make sure that those changes get made? In, in the best way possible. So I'm all about preservation. So um, I understand the uniqueness of South Dallas. I, I mean, if you think about gentrification, I represent gentrification. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little different than the, you know, uh, South Dallas resident, the typical South Dallas resident, certainly the people think is a typical South Dallas resident. However, um, there is a unique cultural relevancy that the Fair Park South Dallas community has that needs to be preserved. Um, there are people, long-term residents, homeowners, uh, who want to stay in their homes, and they should. And um, thank you. Good. Um, and so, you know, my advocacy uh, is to, to help, you know, keep that intact and to, to help, you know, community-based uh, development, community-based change, community-based development. Um, we think that that uh, is, the, is the best way to go, you know, in South Dallas. Awesome. Uh, and so, as far as trying working to address those issues, where do you see this new plan being presented by Human and Co. as uh, as falling on on how that might affect what we're what we're all trying to address here? So, Fair Park is the biggest money making asset 
in South Dallas. Uh, and, you know, the bulk of that is State Fair, right? Because State Fair is the biggest money-making asset in Fair Park. So, unfortunately, um, you know, uh, Fair Park is city-owned, and State Fair is a nonprofit organization. So the, the, the community doesn't benefit from that, the largest, the, largest make, the largest asset that the community has. And that's an issue. Um, and that is not happenstance. And so um, if things stay that the way that they are, which basically is the human plan, you know, to use the money to fix the buildings because the buildings are in disrepair. That changes absolutely nothing. And things stay the way that they are, and we have what we have. Um, and um, I happen to think if they're going to use, uh, you know, close to $1 billion worth of taxpayer money, that that should revolutionize the park. And that should be a place, it should be revolutionized into a, a, a space that is utilized every day and that brings the type of foot traffic into this area on a daily basis that will help spur economic activity. I'm all about the green space, all about, you know, the park and all of that good stuff, which is great, you know, because we need more trees and, you know, we need cleaner air and um, all of those things. But it's all about the economic activity. Spending a billion dollars to fix up buildings that remain empty for most of the year is, is really a bad return on investment. You know, and, and does nothing to bolster um, tax revenue. And so, um, you know, I just think and, that... And alternatively, if you have uh, long-term commercial residents, then they would in part be on the hook for the maintenance. There you so go. So then Absolutely. city of Dallas would need to pay less for that. Exactly. But, I, you know, all of that, you know, rationality aside, dream with me for, for a moment here. <laughs> so so we, we get the funding for the Johnston plan. Okay. Um, you, you're, you're promised all of that bond money and, and $20 million a year. Uh, that we're talking about given to, to human. What what do, what do you do it with it? What is, what is your ideal fair park look like? So my ideal fair park does uh, resemble um, a Central Park, right? Um, which whenever I go to New York, I go to Central Park. Um, I like the idea of a university being there, um, I know that's you know that 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 is you know kind of a far-fetched thing, but I mean since we're dreaming here, um, I think um, a lot of um, uh, you know of the world-class uh, destinations, uh, you know when you you go to cities that have um, spaces you know like like Central Park or um, you know the type of progressive thinking. Um, it's usually centered around a university. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I think that that could be a good idea. But Fair Park would be sort of a central park. It would be an area where people, it, it's utilized every day. And, and when Dallasites um, think about, you know, a place to go, you know, to do whatever, they think they would think of Fair Park. And uh, when somebody comes into town for a convention, at the convention center, they might stay at the Omni, they might not. They might want to stay at a hotel in Fair Park or by Fair Park that they could take a trolley to, take a trolley from that hotel down MLK or down Al Lipscomb, right to the convention center. You know, this, this area is so underutilized. Um, and we're a stone's throw from downtown. Um, it just it just makes 
sense. I, li I like I like a streetcar for South Dallas. Yeah. I think, I think we need to see that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, Tammy Johnston, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys all so much for joining us. Uh, the last city will be up here in just a little bit. I'll still be wandering around begging you for, for all of your money. Um, thanks so much for coming, guys. We really appreciate it. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call.